When it comes to a career in genetics and genomics, the options are endless. And here in studio with us this morning to discuss a little bit more is Andrew Martyrstein, co-chair of the Career Development Committee. Pleasure to have you with us today. Thanks so much for having me. Well, let's get to it. You know, what would you say are some of the challenges for maybe somebody trying to navigate a career in genetics? Yeah, I think there's two key challenges. The first being there's so many exciting projects to do, so many different ways to take your research. What should I do? What should I focus on? And the second thing is navigating your career, let's say you're a grad student or a postdoc, what else can I do besides research if that's not your route? So um, it's always challenging to think about both these questions. We're only one person, we can only do so many things. And so figuring out how to prioritize your time, prioritize what your values are in terms of your career is uh, I think two of the key challenges that every early career member needs to think about. You perfectly brought me to my next question, which is I think a lot of people just assume, okay, a career in genetics means I'm going to be a researcher, but that's not the case. There are other options out there. Yeah, no, okay. definitely, definitely. I mean, besides just taking your research uh, beyond the academic route to industry, such as like a biotech or a startup or in pharma, uh, you can also look into nonprofits, steering the direction of government and funding institutes, such as the NIH or subunits of that, like the NHGRI, NCI. There's even think tank options as well. So there's a lot of different ways you can use your PhD beyond um, just research itself. I'll even mention one last one is advocacy. Thinking about advocacy in terms of uh, fundraising for science or raising awareness for ethical issues and genetics and science in general. Um, that's a great way to use your PhD too. As I mentioned, you're co-chair of the Career Development Committee. How do you think that the ASHG does when it comes to helping these young professionals kind of navigate their career and maybe get a jump start? What I love about ASHG is we have this annual meeting where here we have a couple of events um, that sort of help you develop soft skills, um, such as today we're have a lunch about um, how to leverage confidence in your career. And I think that's key for anything that you want to do. But also throughout the year we have year-round virtual programming through webinars, sort of learn about new types of positions and new types of areas of focus. And so that sort of cultivates um, you know, skill building year-round, also awareness of lots of different paths. You mentioned some of the great opportunities that are happening here at this meeting for some of those young professionals. What would be your biggest piece of advice for somebody maybe just starting out or somebody trying to figure out, you know, what do I want to do with this career? Talk to people. There's, there are thousands and thousands of people in your field that are here that are not just people at your institution. So go out, meet people, talk to people, learn from others. This is, like, this is the best opportunity to do it every single year. Networking. It's yeah. all about networking. It's all about networking. <laughs> yeah, that's why, we're, that's why we're here. And go to the sessions to, you know, learn yeah. about the great science. <laughs> but talk to people. Right. Awesome. All right, Andrew, thank you so much. Pleasure to have you with us today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me again.